As a saloon car driver, possibly going to go the same route as the Funder Linders. I know a couple of other drivers have also gone that route for uh, this this season, and we look forward to seeing what they do on the international fields. But right now, it's A, B, and C about to go at it. Now, in the first round, we had a bit of a change-up in terms of how things were going to run in the classes. They've gone and swapped all around again. Now, let, let's see how this goes again. I mean... Cars making changes, everybody, you know, adjusting to the new specs. Let's see who's bringing this to the round two in our extreme racing series. So there's a good possibility that Nick might have lost out two positions. Have a look and see. No, not quite. Yes, indeed, he has. He's lost out two. So as they head into turn four, Renier Smith putting the pressure on. I see Sab Guterri jumping into Salvi's car this weekend. That's right, in that red rocket. I uh, saw a little nice move from Alan Helligan uh, taking the inside line there, moving up a space. But right now, there's a big move on here from the German. I don't know if the Germans got the pace that uh, Leon's got out front. So Leon can kind of just control things, but a big factor we need to mention up front is, is that there are only two Class A competitors. So how does that affect his ability to score points? Does he score maximums or is there like a, a handicapping of those points depending on how many cars are in the, each category? Yeah, unfortunately we do have a minimum number of, of three in the category in order to score full points. So there will be a reduction in the number of points in that category. Um, I stand to be corrected, but that's my understanding right now. So unfortunately that Class A is going to be a reduced uh, point scoring event today, but uh, Class B is certainly fully populated there and we're going to see some big battles going on. We've got the Class C guys really following nice and closely over here. So we've got Benny Late leading that crew over there, Hein van der Merwe right behind him, and they're right behind that Class B battle. So I wonder if we're going to see some tangling between uh, Class B, Os Bagioni and Yaku Storm, and whether Benny and Hein are going to get involved there. Well, here they come. They're just behind this fight we're watching coming through turn two. And as they come through turn two, there the red rock. Oh, there you go. You are just putting the commentator's curse on them there. I'm not going to say anything that was all Nick, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of driver he is. One hand on the laptop, one hand on the steering wheel. Exactly. Yeah, just chewing that up a little bit. Enter. <laughs> <laughs> kind of what we have to do in the studio here. People can see what we have to do in the studio to try and keep timing monitors and cell phones and uh, laptops and iPads going so you can bring the commentary we do. Yeah, it's fun. And just, we, just there on our screen, we had Reynard Miller. So Reynard uh, uh, almost won the championship last year, uh, beaten by Leon Lopesher. Um, he's in his new E36 M3 Turbo, um, and mm -hmm. he's chasing down, um, was I believe it, uh, Class C over there, doing very nicely. So he was behind Gary Martins mm. in that uh, incredible uh, diesel-powered M2 race car. Black Smoke's always the one that uh, all of the, uh, the tree huggers go, hang on a second, that ain't right. But needless to say, it is a fantastic battle. Further back there, Cochran getting involved in a bit of a fight of his own there too which is good to see and it's a very good fight in fact because we've got about four or five cars involved in that just ahead is jonesy mark jones of course concentrating on bmw m performance racing series this season not having to worry about kazoo racing so he can put his full attention into the m performance racing series look at that classy dogfight i mean this is deja vu we talk about it every single time but incredible racing we've got five cars there probably split by half a second yeah that's uh varish ganpath uh, looking on the uh, uh inside now outside of uh, nick fisher and being led by Mark Jones over there. We see Troy is probably going to make a move now onto, onto a Nandu's car there. Uh, but this little five car dogfight, incredible racing here. Oh, Troy on the inside. Great move there he, from he Troy. He makes the move stick. And there goes Nick down the inside, and he's going to make it uh, two positions past the Nunt there. Of course, all on his own, some right out front there, Leon Lopesha. So no worries really for Leon Lopesha. But have a look at the times, dude. 1068 coming out of Andreas Mayer. Is that a concern? That is some hot times at the moment. So Nick um, only seeing 107.3. Um, how's he going to manage it right now? But I mean, we're, we're at uh, lap six of 10 right now. So we're just over halfway. There's still a lot to happen and there's a lot of management that's going to have to go into the rest of the race. Just waiting for one mistake and any of those guys will pounce. So it may look like they've got a car length or two worth of breathing space, but unfortunately that means nothing in, the, in a racing situation. Gary Martins unfortunately has to go and find a bit of extra money as well because like, diesel is more expensive than petrol <laughs> right now. <laughs> Just makes racing just that much more expensive. But, you <laughs> exactly. know, to have that 007 style smoke screen, uh, I'd take that advantage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, what's happened Cochran. there? Troy Cochran off in the sand. Is that corner five? Yeah, top of the hill at turn five there, unfortunately, there for Troy Cochran in the Arrow car. Arrow BMW parked on the sideline. Doesn't, I'm not quite sure if that was on his own or not. We'll have to wait and see and find out that. Maybe you can get the information and bring it to us on the next one. But uh, here we go. Lopesha down to the line, coming to the flag for the first victory of 2024. Starting his season basically where he ended it. Yeah, led the race really elegantly, maintained the pace, and he looks like he just got through the field with uh, absolute class. This is exactly what we expect from our from our championship uh, winner from last year, um, and a great win for him now in this uh, second round.
Good win here as well for Andreas. He's going to be happy with the performance of this car, particularly getting down to a 1068. Remember the change up, we mentioned it uh, at the first round at the Passion for Speed Festival. Um, uh, this is now a 2 litre turbo, correct? That's right. A 2 litre turbo, not the normally aspirated original engine that came out of that uh, touring car. But uh, need to say that uh, turbo engine and him are gelling well right now. 108 is his last lap, but a 106.8 is his fastest. He beats out Nick Macris. And is it going to be Renier to the line? Just. Renier beats out Sav Gutierre and Osbad Gioni. Benny Late still going to be hanging on here for possibilities of Class C. Yeah, easily done in the end. He's pulled a decent enough margin. And I don't think Hein had an answer. Although Hein was quickest in the heat. So if Hein can find that pace and keep it consistent, watch out in race number two. Yeah, race two, we've got that reverse grid. You've got to do it all over again. So winning over here, unfortunately, that's going to put you in position five. Okay, it was a very good race. Uh, it's very hot outside, but luckily the car's built for it and it, um, it handled the heat, so the car was perfect. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have much competition this weekend, but um, it was still nice to ride and I've really enjoyed it and the car's good. Thank you. Good afternoon today. No ladies, no gentlemen. Just a good afternoon. It was a great race. I came from Germany on Thursday morning, like 11 ish in the morning. My car wasn't ready for Friday practice for the first one. The second one, I did one lap. The third one, I couldn't go out. There was another problem. Practice went well. I qualified first. And the race, yeah, I stayed ahead of all of them. Thanks a lot. It was Again, a great pleasure to drive with the BMW M Performance Race Series. Thank you. Oh, so yeah, I know, um, had amazing uh, quali. Ended up first on, on pole position and um, had quite a fight with the, with the runner up uh, in race two. Managed to defend for about a lap and a half close on two laps. So eventually I got the lead on him and I just kept my, kept my lead. Had a bit of a moment in turn eight about three laps in uh, Fortune I corrected the car on time and uh, grateful the car is running solid um, first first race of the uh, race two I blew the motor um, we installed the second motor we had numerous complications with camshafts etc and Freddie was actually still busy on the clock Monday night to get everything sorted out he took the car out on Wednesday um, gave the thumbs up which resulted in us um, entering a little bit later for the race but we, we're grateful um, that the cars mechanic is out and uh, really looking forward to the next race and for the rest of the year thank you